Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Uh, not yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday we did some multiple choice problems. The day before yesterday, we did uh, on day number two we did some data sufficiency problems on page number two hundred and four and two hundred and five. Today we're going to pick up the story from page number two hundred and six. The very first problem that you see on page number two hundred and six is number two seventy two. Let's get going, shall we? After watching the video, if you find it useful and if you decide that you would like to work with me, you would like to hire my services, you can reach me at. Keshwani Prep, this P is in Peter, R E P, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Let's look at number 72. Number 72, we are told that we have 256 marbles. 256 marbles. They are either blue or green or purple. The question simply is, what is the ratio? What is the ratio of blue to purple? What's the ratio of blue to purple? Let's see what the first statement tells us. First statement tells us the number of green marble. First statement tells us that number of green marbles is four times the number of blue marbles. We have four times as many green marbles as we do the blue ones. The question is, is this enough information for us to be able to figure out this this part right here, the ratio of B to P, the answer is no. You shouldn't have to do all the work to understand that this is not going to work. These are called data sufficiency. As I keep repeating like a parrot, it's a simple concept and yet a lot of the times people keep forgetting it when they're doing it and they end up doing a lot of unnecessary work. We don't actually have to solve the problem, we simply have to be able to tell whether or not we have enough data. And the answer here is no, we do not have enough data, we do not have enough information. This does not tell us enough. How do we know it? Because this is one equation, and here's the second equation. Well, actually, that's the first equation they give us. That's the second equation. The equation that is given to us, this is the given part. There are 256 marbles, which means B plus G plus P equals 256. That's the, that's the first equation. That's the second equation. We cannot solve for three unknown with just two independent equations. The first statement by itself is not enough. A, D, B, C, E. Something I forgot to do there. We must always write them down. Since we just established that the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now that the answer cannot be A or D. Answer would have to be one of these three, either B, C or E. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that number of green marbles that we have is 192. Again, the same thing. Now, when we're looking at the second statement, we cannot look at the first one. That's it. Again, we have the same situation. We have this equation and that equation, two equations two equations, three unknowns, we cannot solve it. Second statement by itself is also not sufficient. What is supposed to happen if we put the two of them together, two statements together? If we put two statements together, voila, now we have three independent equations. One, two, three. Three independent equations, three unknown. There should be no problem at all in order to, you know, in order for us to answer this question, the ratio of B to P. Two statements together is enough. That's it. We are done. As far as the exam is concerned, you are done. You should not have to do anything more than that. Anything more that you do here is a sheer waste of time, which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to waste our time. We're going to solve the problem just for the just purely for the learning purposes, not something you will do in the real exam. As far as the real exam is concerned, we are done with the problem. The answer is C. But putting it together is very straightforward. G is 192 right here. G is 192. Let's put it here. So using this equation here, 192 equals 4 times b, b must equal 192 over 4, and 19 has 4 fours, so that's 4, after we take away 4 fours of 16, after we take away 16, after we take away 16 from the 19, we have a remainder of 3, 3 goes and joins the 2, becomes 32, and 32 has 8 fours. There we go. So we have, we have 48, 48 blue marbles, 192, 192 green marbles, Obviously, we can figure out the purple. After obviously, we can figure out the purple number of purples, and once we have the number of purples, we can figure out the ratio blue to purple. That's it. We're not going to do it. 
Even this part was not necessary, you understand that? Nobody cares what the ratio is. Nobody cares what the ratio is. We were not being asked what is the ratio of blue to purple. What we were being asked is do you have enough data? Do you have sufficient data? Get it? Data sufficiency. Do you have sufficient data to be able to answer that question? And the answer is yes we do if we put the two statements together which is why the answer was C. Next one. Number 273. We are told that we have a mixture that requires B, Y and R, R over B, Y and R, R in the ratio of 2, 3 and 1. If you give me a second, I'll look up what B, Y and R stand for. It's a paint. It's a paint mixture and these are colors. Blue, blue, yellow and green. Or blue, yellow and red. And the question here is, do we have enough yellow? We are told that there is a plenty of, there is, there is plenty of blue and red. So we don't have to worry about blue and red, uh, whether or not we have enough of those. There's plenty of blue, there's plenty of red to go around. The question is, do we have enough yellow? Let's see what the first statement tell us, tells us. Remember that we are looking for uh, enough information just to be able to tell whether or not we have enough yellow. The first statement tells us that we need to make need to make 20 units. Whatever the units are, I didn't bother to pay attention there. Maybe they are quarts, maybe they are gallons, whatever the, whatever the hell it is, it's 20 units. And uh, well, let's see what happens. So if this is the ratio, blue to yellow to red, two to three to one. Let's see. Let's see what we can. Let's see how much. Let's see how much we, how much yellow we need to make one unit. One unit. Now what's, what's going on here, pay attention here, what's going on here is that because we have a ratio of 2 to 3 to 1, if you put 2 gallons of this and 3 gallons of that and 1 gallon of that, you'll end up with 6 gallons, 6 units, 6 units. Let's see how much yellow we need, let's see how much yellow we need to make 1 unit, not 6 units but 1 unit. If you want to figure out how many yellow we need to make 1 unit, you just have to divide everything by 6. This tells us how much yellow we need to make 1 unit, apparently half a gallon. I'm going to speak in terms of gallons instead of units. Okay? Well, we don't need we don't need to make one unit. We don't we don't want one gallon. We want twenty gallons. So let's multiply everything by twenty. Multiply everything by twenty. Everything by twenty, and that should tell us. Now we don't have to worry about the red part. We don't have to worry about the blue part because we've got plenty of that. We have to figure out whether or not whether or not we have enough yellow. So we have twenty times three over six. That's a half. That's a ten. So apparently. We need, we need 10 units, 10 units of yellow. But there is nothing else that is, that is told to us. There is no way to figure out for, for us, there is no way to figure out if we actually have 10 units of yellow. If we did have 10 units of yellow, then we should be able to make, we should be able to make uh, the mixture that we want of 20 units. Because there is nothing else to tell us whether or not we have 10 units of yellow, the first statement by itself is not enough. A, D, B, C, E. First statement by itself is not enough, which means answer cannot be A or D. It will have to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that uh, 10 Y is available. Voila! 10 Y is available. But how much do we need? How much yellow do we need? Here the question is how much yellow do we need? We do not know that. 
We do not know that because we don't know how many units we need altogether. That statement, that information was given to us in the first statement, which is why you have to keep the two separate. We do know now that we have 10 units of yellow, but how much do we need to make altogether? Which is why I erased the first statement. First statement is gone, you have to erase it from your memory. Second statement by itself, it does tell us we have 10 units of yellow, but how much yellow do we need? How many units altogether do we need to make? That was given to us in the first statement. First statement told us that we need to make 20 units. We don't have that information anymore, which means second statement by itself is not enough. Second statement by itself is not enough, but if we put the first and the second together, first and the second together, well the first statement tells us we need to make 20 units and we did, we did the work and we found out that in order to make 20 units all together we need 10 units of yellow and second statement tells us that we do have 10 units of yellow. So two, two of them together do the job. The answer is C. The answer is T. C. We need 10 of them and second one tells us that yes indeed we do have 10 of them. 270 274. Question here is, was, was the average of group A greater than the average of group B? Let's see what the first statement tells us. Again, it is very important that you have the book in front of you because you have to read the problem yourself as I keep telling you over and over and over again. Otherwise it will not work. The first statement tells us first statement tells us that we have 10 people in A. Num number, of, number of people in group A is 10 and we have 20 people in B. Knowing the group sizes does not answer the question. Knowing the group sizes does not help us answer the question. Simply knowing that one group has 10 people, the other group has 20 people, does that, does that enable us to, to, to ascertain whether or not the average of one group is greater than or less than or equal to the other group? Of course not. Of course not. First statement by itself does not do the job. First statement by itself does not do the job. A, D, B, C, E. Since first statement by itself does not do the job, that's the result that the answer cannot be A or D, it has to be either B, C or E. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that the highest score achieved from Google, highest score was achieved, highest score was achieved from group B. And it tells us that the lowest score achieved was from group A. Let me read the problem first for a second here to see how they're phrased. There are two groups of students who work on a history test. The arithmetic score. There you go. They, they keep talking about group A and group B. If it makes it easier for you, think in terms of boys and girls. Okay? Think in terms of boys and girls. So the first statement tells us that there are 10 boys in the class and 20 girls in the class. Knowing that there are 10 boys in the class and 20 girls in the class does not enable us to ascertain whether or not the average score of boys was greater than the average score of girls. So that's why we cross out A and D. Second statement goes on to tell us that the highest score that was achieved in the class was, was in fact achieved by a girl. The highest scoring student was a female. It also tells us the lowest, lowest scoring student was a male. That doesn't tell us which group has the higher average, does it? Second student by itself is also not enough. The answer is not B. Now when we put them together, it's still not going to do us any, any good at all. Simply knowing that one group is twice as large as the second group and the highest score was, score was, was from, group one, from one group and the lowest score from the other, that doesn't enable us to ascertain about anything about the group's average. Nothing at all. We cannot tell which group had the higher average, girls or boys. The answer here is E. Even putting the two together, even putting the two statements together does not get us anywhere. The answer is E. We do not have sufficient data. The alarm bell should go off insufficient data, insufficient data, like that. 
275. 275. It says money. Money was divided. So a certain amount of money was divided among among X, Y, and Z. Tell you what, let's play a little game here. Tell you what, I'm going to play a little game with you here. I'm going to tell you how much money was divided, okay? I'm going to tell you how much money was divided. So I'm telling you right now, $57,000, $50,000 was divided, was divided among three people, X, Y, and Z, three people. And I'm also telling you, I'm also telling you that the ratio of the money that X got and ratio of the money that Y got was three to five. And the ratio of X to Z was two to one. The question is, how much does each person get? How much does each person get? This is quite a legitimate question. It can appear as a multiple choice question, which is what I just did here. I converted this status efficiency problem in a very straightforward, very simple multiple choice problem. What I want you to do now is to pause this video. Do not watch it anymore. Pause it. Solve this problem yourself. One more time. $57,000 were divided among X, Y, and Z such that, such that the ratio of X to Y was 3 to 5 and X to Z was 2 to 1. How much does each person get? That is the question. Pause the video. Once you have the answer, resume the video and pick up the story from there. In the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy my tea a little bit. Well, let's get going. Okay? So, we're going to do the multiple choice problem that I just gave you and the data sufficiency problems together. Let's, let's get going. How much does each person get? That's the question. So, let's do them together. So, A, D, B, C, E. So, forget about $57,000 for the time being. Certain amount of money. Certain amount of money was... Uh, was... Uh, was divided and the question is who gets the most money now the question is who gets the most money well simply knowing that the ratio of x to y is 3 to 5 does not tell us who gets the most money simply knowing that for every three dollars y gets five dollars i know nothing about z how can we say who gets the who got the most money we cannot the first statement by itself is not enough so we, we know the answer cannot be a or d it has to be either b c or e now if you look at second statement by itself again we have the same problem Simply knowing that the ratio of x to z is 2 to 1 does not enable us to figure out who got the most money because that's how the question is phrased here. The question is who got the greatest proportion of the funds. Well, we cannot tell simply by telling by simply by knowing the ratio of the money that was divided between two people as to who got the most money because we know nothing about the third person. So we know obviously second second statement by itself is also not enough. Answer cannot be B. But if you put them together. If we put them together, there is enough information. Now we do know about X, Y, and Z. We should be able to figure out who got the most money. Therefore, the answer is C. But we do not have to do it out, as I repeat, over and over and over again. If you sit there and waste your time to actually do it, out, do it out to see who got the most money, then you have only yourself and your idiocy to blame. Because it is not required here. Nobody is asking us who got the most money. What we are being asked here is, do we have sufficient data to be able to tell? And the answer is yes, we do. We have the two ratios there. So what we're, what we're going to do here from this point forward is simply for learning purposes, as far as the exam is concerned, it is done. So watch what happens. So watch what happens. I'm going to erase this part here. So we have x, x to y to z x to y we know is 3 to 5, isn't it? x to y is 3 to 5, voila. We also know that x to z is 2 to 1. x to z 
is 2 to 1 that is given to us isn't it very good I'm going to raise this thing because because we need the we're going to need the room in a second but as you can see there why is missing here this missing we need some we need to put all three of them together and the way we do that is by making by making one column you see this is the only column where two entries appear this there here there is only one entry here is one so this column where where we have entry for both entry for x in both of the scenarios we have to make these numbers the same we have to make these numbers the same this is three this is two which means the least common multiplier lcm is six let's multiply this ratio by two watch what happens multiply this ratio by two which is still the same ratio 3 to 5 is same as 6 to 10 we have not changed the ratio have we and let's multiply this by 3 which is still the same ratio 2 to 1 is same as 6 to 3 we have not changed anything now watch what happens now as we put them together voila we get we get a 6 here for x we get a 10 for y and 3 voila there we go and the question was who got the most money that we can answer very easily who has got the most dough the answer is Mr. Y Mr. Y got most money now let's 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 continue with our story so this is the kind of um, uh, this is how far you will have to go in a multiple choice problem and then from that point on we were told that we have fifty seven thousand dollars remember so let's let's pick up the story from here I don't know why I'm doing this thing because it's taking a very long time this has nothing to do with data sufficiency it's just something we made up just for fun just for learning purposes. So as you can see, 6 to 10 to 9, all together is 19. And we have $57,000, as, as you can see where we're going with it. And I hope you're able to see that 19 is exactly 3 times 57, because 20, 23, is, 23 is a 60. If 23 is a 60, then 19 threes, since we have one fewer three, three, 19 threes should be 57. You see, 23 is a 60, therefore, therefore it stands to reason that 19 threes must be 57. There we go. Each unit is worth $3,000. Each unit is worth $3,000, which means this guy got $18,000. This guy got $30,000. And this guy got $9,000. Voila. Now, do they add up to what they need to add up to? The better. This is uh, 16, 7, yes, 18 plus 9 is 27, 27 plus 30 is 57. There you go. The question was, how much money did each person get? Where is the answer? Let's go to the next one. 270, 276. Now, if you, when I ask you to pause the video and do the problem yourself, and I hope you followed my advice and actually did do it, and if you had problems solving these questions, if you had trouble, trouble with it, or if it took you a long time, that is not a good sign. What I'm going to advise you now, what I'm going to ask you now, is to watch some videos where you will learn how to do ratio and proportion problems fast. Do you understand? Watch. Whenever, whenever you're looking for a certain topic on math, just type in my name, because of course without my name you're going to probably get thousand hits. There are quite a, quite a few people obviously doing the same thing that I'm doing. Just type in my name Keshwani and type in the topic that you're looking for. Here you're going to type in rate ratio and then uh, Keshwani and then ratio and proportions and you will find some videos and if you don't find them I'm going to tell you where they are just look for basic math just type in basic math along with my name obviously and you will find day 81 through 90 day 126 through 130 and day 156 through 160. 
you don't have to watch all of them you don't have to watch all of them because obviously there are quite a few even if you watch the first 10 that should get you ready to tack to be able to tackle easy problems easy ratio prob ratio proportion problems and then you go to medium ones and then the finally the hard ones the more difficult ones it all depends on what you want to achieve 276 276 it says the average number of canes average number of canes donated for a student apparently they had some kind of a food drive everybody was donating some flour, some canes and the question is what was the average average number of canes donated per student let's see what the first statement tell us, tells us first statement tells us that 56 56 canes were donated 56 canes were donated simply knowing that 56 canes were donated it's not a worthless information that information is not worthless it is actually quite a useful information but it is not enough we know now that we have 57 cans, 57 cans were donated, but in order to figure out what was the average number of cans donated per student, obviously we need to know the number of students in the class. We don't have that. First statement by itself, which is why you have to emphasize by itself. First statement by itself is not enough. Do you understand? We're not saying first statement is not enough. First statement by itself is not enough. We're not saying first statement is useless. First statement by, by itself is useless. A, A, D, B, C, E. Since we ruled out first statement, answer cannot be A or D, it has to be either B or C. Let's see what the second statement tells us. Second statement tells us that number of canes, let's call it C, is 40, is 40 more than the number of students. Let's call it S. Again, simply knowing that the number of canes were donated now, we cannot look at the first term at this point. Simply knowing that there are number number of canes that were donated were 40 more than the actual number of students in the class, that is not enough for us to figure out what's the average number of canes that was donated per student. Second term by itself is not enough. But I hope you are able to see immediately, right away, that putting the two together is enough. Putting the two together is enough for us to be able to figure out what is the average number of canes donated per student. Because we have two unknowns, number of canes, the number of students, and two equations. The first equation is that C equals 56. And the second statement is C is 40 more than the number of students. And you know what C is. Do you understand? Once we know what C is, C is 56. We're not going to do any of this thing in the real exam. But, just for the sake of it, it's very simple. You don't have to do it in the exam. Do you understand? We can stop right here. We have enough information. As you can see, 56 minus 40, we have 16 students. We have 16 students, 56 cans. We divide the one by the other, and that's your answer. That's the average number of cans. 56, 56 divided by 16 whatever that works out to be. We can divide top and bottom by 4, I guess. Yes, we can divide by 4. 16 has 4 fours. 5 has 1 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 6, becomes 16, and 16 has 4. But all of this work that you see there, even though it only took few seconds, but few seconds here and few seconds there, they add up to few minutes. Don't do that. Don't do any unnecessary work in the exam. Do you understand? That's the end of the first column. And I think I'm going to stop here because if I were to dive into the second column, there's quite a few problems in the second column. It will become a very long video. I don't want to do that. It gets tiring after a while. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And tomorrow we're going to pick up again with multiple choice problems. We're going to switch back and forth. We can alternate. All right? Again, as I said before in the beginning of the video, if you need to get hold of me, just send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com and I'll be more than happy to do whatever it is that I can do to help you. All right? Bye now.